When we think of uh, social networks and when we think of culture, uh, we tend to think of examples that are very well known in humans and perhaps in some very well studied animals like chimpanzees. But actually, it's possible that these processes may occur for a large number of species. Tit started opening milk bottles in the early 20th century and this seemed to spread throughout um, most of the British Isles, in fact, and be sustained over a decade or two until people started cottoning on and putting um, plastic caps or changing the type of milk they bought. Um, and this is a really good example of a possible learnt behaviour where they're learning from observing other individuals and then it spreads at a population level so that we have a new, uh, what we might call, tradition. We've trained individuals to act as that initial innovator and then introduce them back into the population with uh, what we call these puzzle boxes and watch the solution spread and persist through the population. These puzzle boxes are a very simple design. All it is is a door which can be slid from either way and we train an individual in the population to slide it either left or right. And so this is completely arbitrary, it's equally rewarding, you get a food item either way. But what we can then do is track this, uh, the spread of this left or right behaviour through the population. We track those birds throughout their lives just by putting little metal rings on. And about six or seven years ago, we realised that we could also track these birds by putting little electronic tags in a ring as well. Um, when the birds come to the puzzle boxes, their identity is recorded and their solution choice, and then we can get a lot of data at a population level scale, which we haven't really been able to do before. We found that great tits can actually learn through observing one another in the wild, and they do so incredibly efficiently so that we see these new behaviours spread rapidly from uh, one or two individuals to hundreds of individuals over the course of a few weeks. Once you have more and more demonstrators, you get a very rapid diffusion until it plateaus at the point where everybody in the population has learnt or everybody that can learn has learnt. Thus far we've measured it over two generations of birds and it seems quite possible that it can persist for much longer than that and that's something we're looking into now. The rare individuals who move between our different subpopulations tend to change their behaviour once they move into a new population to match the population they move into. Um, and so we're still trying to understand why they might do this, but the consequence of it is that each population can maintain its own unique tradition even though there's movement between them. One of the reasons that I chose to come to Oxford and, and have stayed here um, is that the university has this fantastic resource, White and Woods. And within Whiteham Woods, there are many things that are studied here, many aspects of the ecology of Whiteham that are studied. Within Whiteham is this population of great tits, particularly, that have been studied by people in Oxford since the 1940s. And this gives you really an unparalleled kind of data set and an understanding of the way that a population works. And it's that foundation on which we've built the work that we've just published now. And it's really a privilege to work here and get to work outdoors every day with wild animals. I mean, who could ask for anything better? <laughs> I could ask for it to be warm. <laughs>